guys, it's Ashley and welcome to my bookshelf tour. I haven't done one of these videos in a very long time, so I thought it was about time that I sat down and just fully filmed a bookshelf tour. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I did recently reorganize them, so they are nice and pretty and clean right now, and I thought now is the best time to do it before they become a mess again. But the reason that I reorganized them was just because I had a lot of books lying around that I needed to fit on the shelves and a couple of books that I needed to get rid of. So I thought, why not reorganize and then film a tour? But this is just the intro. I just wanted to say hi, welcome, and um, I hope you guys enjoy. So the first thing I wanna show you guys before we get into the shelves is my actual reading nook, which I just consider to be this chair and the side table next to it. Right now I'm reading these Violent Delights and I am liking it. I guess so far. I'm about halfway through and I'll see what I think by the end of the story. Right now I'm like sort of in the middle, kind of liking it, kind of not liking it, so we'll see where that goes. But um, usually on this side table I just have whatever book I'm currently reading or whatever books were on my TBR that month and a couple of candles and whatever other junk I end up throwing on this table. Of course I cleaned it off for this video so you guys don't have to see any of that, but that's usually what's on the table. Also the little thing behind Behind my table is my basket of yarn for my crochet, so just ignore that. But moving closer to my bookshelves, I have my reading chair. Now typically my reading chair when I film is actually faced that way, and my camera is over there. I moved it here for the look of having it close to my bookshelves, and honestly I kind of like it here now, so I might just keep it here. But typically on my chair I'll have this, which doubles as a blanket, but is actually a really fluffy robe cardigan. So fun fact, if you guys watch my videos, and ever wanted to know. I also have a velvet pillow and my little Winnie the Pooh squishmallow that my sister got me for Christmas because I love Winnie the Pooh. Who doesn't? If you don't like Winnie the Pooh, I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> also, in case anybody was wondering, the candles on my side table, this one that's burning right now is from Urban Outfitters from a couple years ago. And then the little one is clearly from a PR package I got for Enola Holmes. But yeah, I usually just have candles on here and I actually don't really burn them a lot unless I'm spending a lot of time in my room. So hence why they're burning now. And then before we get onto the actual bookshelf portion, I thought I would just show you these little prints and things that I have hanging on the sides of my shelves. So clearly this is a little pennant flag for Wansick uh, Unit 919 from Nevermore. This picture here is clearly from Percy Jackson, but I got it at Book Expo in 2018, I want to say it was. That is actually not Rick Riordan's signature, that is the artist's signature, but either way, I still love the print. And then we move down a little bit, and this print here is actually from either Owl Crate or Fairy Loot a couple years ago, or honestly, it could be from any of the subscription boxes that I used to unbox on my channel. I've forgotten at this point where I got it, but it is from Throne of Glass and it is Manon and she's writing, what is, oh my god, I haven't read the series in so long, Abraxos, is that the name of the dragon thing? I don't know but it's Manon. And then going down one more, this is a print that I got from Redbubble years and years and years ago. It's a quote from Gemina by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, which is the second book in the Illuminae trilogy. Um, and it says, you might only get one shot, so shoot. From what I remember, if I'm remembering correctly, this quote is from a very suspenseful part of the book. And so that's why I wanted to get it on a print because it just, I love it. I love it a lot. And then if we come around on this side of the shelves, we have this print from, what is her name? What is her name? Oh my God. I can't think of her name here, but I'll put it on the screen when I edit this video. Um, but she does all of the artwork for A Court of Thorns and Roses and for like a lot of other uh, books, like Aurora Rising she also did the cover for. So that sort of style of art you'll see, but this is a print from A Court of Thorns and Roses, obviously Feyre and Resand and the whole gang. I don't remember what they were called, but that's... That's what we've got. And then this one down here. So this one is actually a funny story. I got this from a fairy loot box, I think, and I'm pretty sure it is from the Grisha trilogy. Um, but I think it's what Nikolai says. When people say impossible, they usually mean improbable. But this was actually a typo. Um, clearly there are two S's and usually when there aren't supposed to be. And they did send a replacement one to everybody. But for whatever reason, I liked the messed up one better. So I just kept it on my shelves. And uh, that's, that's the story behind that. <laughs> so before we get into the actual tour, I just want to tell you guys real quick how I organize my shelves. I've organized them this time based on genre and then within the genres based on 
color. So up there in the corner where the white starts is where the fantasy starts. And so you can kind of follow how many fantasy books I have as you go down, 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 down. We're in the blue, we're in the black. There's a stool right here because I'm about to film that shelf up there, so ignore that. Um, but down, down, it gets like purple, black down there, and then you go all the way up here, still gray, still black, still gray, still black. And then the white there is what starts middle grade. So then you follow middle grade all the way down to the next white. And then we have romance contemporary, follow that all the way down and so on and so forth. So I will go through those as we get to them. But for now, let's just start at that shelf up there. So this white section is part of my fantasy section. It is the start of all of my fantasy books. Clearly we have two big series here because I don't have a whole lot of white books. So we'll just go through them pretty quickly. First off, this is a candle called obviously Red London. It's based on the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. And I got it from a subscription box. Oh, Whimsify, there we go. Whimsify exclusive. So it's from Whimsify and it's uh, Murkai candles. So I don't know if they still make candles, but uh, that's where it's from. And then I also have this cute little fake plant here because this shelf corner does not get any light whatsoever so fake plant there aren't that many books here first up we have renegades by marissa meyer this is actually uh the uk cover that i absolutely loved when i first saw for the first time so i went and i ordered it from somewhere i think it was book depository because it was from the uk and uh it came and i'm just in love with it i love how pretty it is how simplistic and minimalist and it's just like everything about it i absolutely love and then we have my paperback copy of a darker shade of magic I don't remember why I got this, but I have it. Um, a Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray, which I still have yet to read, even though I've had for years and years. Uh, Lore by Alex Bracken, which I'm so glad that I got now when I did, because otherwise I'd have one less white book on these shelves. The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. You all might know how I feel about that story. And then we have the Ember in the Ashes trilogy and the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy all completing my white shelf. And so then I go into a little bit of pink, which I don't really have much of clearly, and then we go into red. So this little flower thing was also from my PR package for Enola Holmes, the movie. It was just so cute and I just didn't wanna, you know, waste it so I kept it on my shelf and it goes perfectly on this shelf with all the other red books. So my two pink books are here. Clearly this is the collector's edition of the Gathering of Shadows book in the Darker Shade of Magic series. It's got really cool little like pictures on the inside that different artists have done so I really love it and I still need to get the third book in the series as the collector's edition so uh, don't let me forget to do that guys. <laughs> then these two books are actually a special edition of the Mortal Instruments. I don't remember what they're called. I truly don't. I just know that I got them off Book Depository because I'm pretty sure that they're UK. So um, if you're interested in that, maybe check that out. Then we just go through. You can clearly see what these books are. The next one that I wanna point out is actually my Throne of Glass series. So this is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Mass. And recently I actually got these new covers for them. So they're just new dust jackets. I just took the old ones off and replaced them with these new ones because I thought they were so pretty. And they just like added more color and life to the series rather than the covers that were originally on them. If you wanna get your own dust jackets, I know that they do them for a couple of different series and the company is called Nerdy Ink. I'll write it on the screen again when I go to edit, but yeah, the dust jackets are beautiful and you'll see them throughout this video because obviously different colors. But yeah, I love it. This one is of Manon and Abraxos. Again, again, I love Manon. And then we go a little farther down the row. I mean, you can see what all of these books are. <laughs> Um, these books I do want to talk about because they are the graphic novels. Oh my god, I can't get them out. The Steel Prince graphic novel series. I still have not read all of them yet. Um, I should probably do that because I can probably do that within like an afternoon. But yeah, I absolutely love them. I love Victoria Schwab's world. The Darker Shade of Magic world is just amazing and I'm really excited to read them. So then we move down to the next shelf, which is clearly the beginning of orange into yellow, into green. Before we get to the books, I do have this little Camp Half-Blood pennant that I got from Owl Crate Jr. So I am obsessed with this. I've had this for years. I keep it on my shelf at all times because I just love it so much. It just, I don't know, it looks so authentic to me. Like I genuinely just feel like, like you go to Camp Half Flood and you get this and you like represent, you know, how some people like represent their colleges and stuff. I love this, so I will never get rid of this. Um, but I keep it on the shelf because it's orange. We've got Cassandra Clare, Brandon Sanderson, Cassandra Clare. Um, this is another one of the like new covers for Throne of Glass. So this one is, I'm not sure who that's supposed to be. Is that supposed to be Kale or is that supposed to be Dorian? 
That is, that is a good question. Okay, but let's put that one back. We've got Graceling, we've got The Hidden Oracle, we've got Broken Wish by Julie C. Dow, which I remember getting this in a package and apparently um, it's supposed to be like a series written by like four different authors, which I thought sounded really cool. Then I put all of his dark materials together because they all had the same sort of color spines, so that's why they're all next to each other. Um, King of Scars, City of Glass, another one of these really pretty covers, Kingdom of Ash. This one is supposed to be what is her name? Oh my gosh. I think I need to reread the series. I don't remember anything. Whatever her name is, I remember her. I just don't remember her name right now. But yeah, they're just really pretty covers. Got City of Bones, The Burning Maze, The Hammer of Thor. Speaking of which, I meant to say, um, the Rick Riordan books that I have on these shelves. So you might remember that I mentioned that I have middle grade books also on my shelves. The Rick Riordan ones that I have in my fantasy are ones that I would classify as more like YA, I guess. Even though the Trials of Apollo aren't really YA, they are pretty middle grade still. I'm not really sure what my thought process was for any of that, but just know that I included Percy Jackson and the King Chronicles in middle grade and the rest of Rick Riordan's work in fantasy. Don't ask me why. That's just what I did. Then we have Wild Beauty, which I've been wanting to read for a very long time now and I just haven't yet. I know that it's supposed to be like a magical realism with like a garden and some other stuff. That was a really bad description, I'm sorry. The Toll by Neil Schusterman, which I covet with my life. Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. Again, this one is of Rowan. I at least know that character. And then we've got The Unbound by Victoria Schwab. So moving down to like the teal blue category shelf here. First up as decoration, I have this Percy Jackson candle that is from A Court of Candles. Oh, it's not focusing. Just trust me on this, it's from A Court of Candles. So to start off on this shelf, we have Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, which you all know I absolutely love. You might think that it's gray, but surprisingly it has like a very faint greenish tint. So that's why I kept it in this shelf. Then we have Lily 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 Blue, Chain of Gold, which I still haven't read, uh, Sorcery of Thorns, Empire of Storms, which let me pull this one out to show you guys what that one looks like. There we go. Don't ask me who that character is. Maybe it's Lysandra. I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. This is the first stack of books that I have since the white shelf up above, mostly because I kind of forgot that I could have done that for those two shelves up there. And uh, so then I just started doing it here. So we've got The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, City of Fallen Angels, the other version of it, The Gilded Ones, which is an arc, but I keep on this shelf because I did love the story and um, it's actually not coming out until this year now. It got way pushed back, so keeping it on here. The House on the Cerulean Sea, which I'm not sure if it's fantasy. I'm pretty sure it's some kind of urban fantasy. The Lost Hero, Thunderhead, and The Ship of the Dead. Then we've got Court of Wings and Ruin, The Last Magician, which I love. Um, and then we have two of the Throne of Glass new covers. So uh, the first one is Tower of Dawn, which is clearly Kale. And then the other one is the Assassin's Blade, which I'm pretty sure is Sam. Then we have the Bane Chronicles, Renegades, Outlander, and this cruel design. I really like the colors of this shelf. I think that this like teal blue turquoise almost color has always been like one of my favorite colors. So. Yeah, I really like it. Now we're getting into the darker colored books. We've got some blues, mostly dark blues, and some purples, and some gray. This is also where I kind of started to mess up the color a little bit because I do have some purple-ish books here and then these are supposed to be dark blue but in reality they just look gray and then you come down to this shelf and I have more purples so the purples are kind of divided and as are the grays but we're just gonna forget about that for a little bit. So on the blue shelf we start with City of Ashes, The Book of Dust, The Raven King, Frostblood, The Son of Neptune, Strange the Dreamer, The Raven Boys. I don't know why I'm reading all of these out. You can clearly see them. Then we have Queen of Air and Darkness, Supernova, City of Ashes, The Way of King, I actually have not told anybody that I got, but I did get this book for Christmas and I'm very excited to start reading it because obviously I now love Brandon Sanderson, so now I need to read everything. Um, this is book one of the Stormlight Archive, which I've heard a lot about, so I'm very excited to give it a try and see what I think. Um, this is a very, very hefty book, so it's going to take me some time. Oop. It's gonna take me some time, but I'm very, very much looking forward to it. Uh, then we have Nimona, which is actually my one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. Um, one of the only graphic novels that I've read, so let's just forget about that. Nimona is like the cutest, sweetest, little, funniest 
darkest graphic novel all in one. It's great and I love it so much. Um, then we have the Guinevere Deception and the Red Scrolls of Magic, which I ended up keeping the arc of uh, because it matches the cover that I prefer on them, which is this like, you know, drawn design that sort of separates it from the Mortal Instruments series. So I like the cover, so I kept the arc. And then in this stack over here, we have the House of Hades, the Dark Prophecy, the Sword of Summer, um, which are kind of like the purplish books that I was talking about that we're just gonna ignore. Um, then we have Lady Smoke, The Archives, The Hero of Ages, House of Dragons, and Spin the Dawn. This is also an arc. I just have been meaning to read it and I haven't yet, even though it came out the middle of last year. So we're just gonna forget about that. So then last but not least on this big bookshelf, we have the purplish gray shelf. Starting over on this side, we have some Percy Jackson books there. Then we go to Girls of Paper and Fire, which has these really awesome like neon pink pages and I'm obsessed with it. Calamity by Brandon Sanderson, which fun fact, I have Firefight and Calamity, but I don't have Steelheart, which is the first book. So I uh, haven't been able to read that series yet. And then we have the book that started this whole series, Throne of Glass with Selena on the cover. It's just, just, I just can't get over how pretty these covers are. They're just so beautiful and they look so pretty together on a shelf. Too bad I separated them, ha 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 ha. Then we have Muse of Nightmares, followed up by this big stack of gray books. I know that this is a running joke when people categorize their shelves by a color, but um, fantasy books tend to be among the gray and black colors, so that's fun. I tried to just shove them all at the bottom. We have City of Glass in the really pretty um, editions of this series. I just, I love these two so much. They're just, oh, I love them. Then we go into a lot of fantasy. So Snow Like Ashes, Mirage, another A Darker Shade of Magic copy, which is again, the collector's edition. Um, a Song of Wraiths and Ruin, Anya's Ghost, which is a graphic novel actually that I haven't read yet. Um, House of Salt and Sorrow, The Demon King, which I really want to read this year. Uh, the Will of Ascension and uh, the Shadow of the Wind, which again, I also really want to read this year, so I don't know why I put it at the very, very bottom, but we'll just have to dig it out eventually. Then we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, uh, Wings of Ebony, which I haven't shown on my channel yet because I literally just got it in the mail, but I'm really excited to read this story. Simon Teen sent it to me, and I believe it should be out. I'll put the release date on the screen so you guys know if it's out or not, but it sounds like a really good story. Here, I'll put the synopsis here so you can read it if you want because it just sounds really, really good, and I'm really excited to get to it. Uh, so then we have Truth Witch, Caraval, Fury Born, Six of Crows, and A Frost of Star... Uh, a, fro a, a Court of Frost and Starlight. Why was that so hard for me to say? Probably because I could not give two shits about this story. I did not like this book so much. This just did not need to exist. Apologies to anybody who loves that book. <laughs> that is shelf number one completed. Uh, five, six actually, if you count the top bookshelves that I just showed you. Time to move on to that one up there. Let me grab my stool. Okay, so starting the lineup at the top of this shelf is this guy. This is my little skeleton guy. I use him as a bookend. I got him from Michael's, the craft store, over Halloween of last year, and he's literally just stayed on my shelf um, year round. He's just a cute little skeleton. He sits on a pile of books. He reads a book. He is awesome, and I love him, and I use him so that my books don't fall over. <laughs> anyway, so this starts the sort of black, very dark gray section. We have And I Darken by Kirsten White. Children of Blood and Bone, The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, A Court of Mist and Fury, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakravorty, which, oh my god, I love this book so much. This Savage Song and Our Dark Duet, I don't know, I felt like I should just put them together since there's only two of them. Ash Princess and Ember Queen, and then the original copy of Vicious that I have, which I still really love this cover. Like, I don't know, I just feel like that's just so classic. So classic, like, evil villain sort of thing. Like, he's literally just, like, standing there looking over the town, the city, whatever it's called. I love it. And then because so many of Cassandra Clare's books are, like, dark gray, I just put them all in one stack all together. I didn't know what else to do with them, and I thought it would look weird if I separated them, and the majority of the shelf was just Cassandra Clare. So we just put them in a stack and hoped that it looked good. And so we're just about done with the fantasy shelf. I am going to finish up here, and then at that that white part is where the middle grade starts. So we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, Vengeful, two more editions of A Darker Shade of Magic. So this one is, actually, I don't remember what this one is. Oh my God, wait, why do I? Oh, exclusive collector's edition? What? Oh, this one has pictures in it too. Ooh, cool. Oh my God, this picture? Oh, this is getting really hard to use my camera. Um, this is like one of my favorite pictures that I've seen anybody create. 
of A Darker Shade of Magic. I just love that image so much. Oh my god. Anyway, okay, so this is the exclusive collector's edition. I don't really know where I got this, actually. I'm gonna say it's Barnes & Noble. Um, and then this one is actually the UK edition, which I also really like because it has these really cool end pages. Yeah. So then we've got Crooked Kingdom, The Name of the Wind, Legendborn, and then the Infernal Devices series, which Oh, I thought it was out of order, but it's not. We're good, we're good, okay. And then City of Ghosts is what starts my middle grade shelf that kind of runs a couple of shelves down. So let me explain a little bit behind my reasoning for this. So for me, even though middle grade books are not a particular genre, like middle grade itself is not a genre, right? Like there's fantasy and you know different things within middle grade. I just feel like I needed to separate it from the rest of the fantasy because I don't, I don't know. I just feel like YA fantasy and middle grade fantasy are pretty different and so I just wanted them separated. Plus I have so many middle grade stories on my shelf that I felt like I should separate them. So that's what it came down to. Let me just go ahead and share with you what I have in my collection. So City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab, which is the first book in the series and I love. Arlo Finch in the Valley of Fire, which I got from an Allocrate box, I think. Tristan Strong Destroys the World, the second book in the King Chronicles, Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab, which is book number two. Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, which I tried reading and just could not get into for some reason. That is literally the only Rick Riordan Presents book that I've ever not been able to read and get through has been Dragon Pearl. I don't know why and I feel really bad. Enola Holmes. I actually got this again in the Enola Holmes PR package. For some reason I just kept a lot of stuff from that package. I really liked the whole aesthetic of it so um, I just kept a lot of it. Uh, then we have book four, The Battle of the Labyrinth in the Percy Jackson series. Book number one in the Kane Chronicles, Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend, which is book three in my one of my favorite series, Never more. And then we have this like uh, King Chronicles, like Brooklyn House Magician's Manual Guide to Egyptian Gods. I got this when I got my King Chronicles books from Disney. And I mean like from the publisher, like Disney Publishing House, not like the actual Disney parks. I wish they sold Percy Jackson and Kane Chronicles stuff. That would be so cool. So then we have my sort of orangey, green, blue, purple shelf here. Uh, before we get into any of that, I have these two little fake plants that I absolutely love. This one's a little succulent guy, and this one is a little fern looking thing. Um, he's kind of hitting the top of the shelf there, but it doesn't really bother me that much. I like how the plants and the greenery just kind of like separate it from, I don't know, the rest of the books. Um, on different shelves, you know? And then this guy is a Funko Pop of Jace. Um, I think, sadly, that this is supposed to represent Jace from the Shadowhunters TV show, um, meaning Dominic Sherwood, because it just, to me, it looks like Dominic Sherwood. And as much as I can't stand Dominic Sherwood, and especially him in that show, sorry to anybody who likes him, um, I just really love the Funko Pop, so I can't get rid of him. He's just gonna stay here because, I don't know, this is just the shelf that I always seem to have him on. So whatever books are here, he is here to stay. So to start off this middle grade shelf, we have Furthermore by Tahara Mafi, which I've never read. I'm so mad at myself that I've never read this. The Sea of Monsters, Sal and Gabby Break the Universe. You will also notice, by the way, that I have a lot of Rick Riordan Presents. Then we have The Firekeeper, Race to the Sun, Amal Unbound, which this cover is so pretty. Like, look at this cover. I love this so much. Then we have Nevermore, uh, The Last Life of Prince Alistair, and the second book in the Adventurer's Guild series, whoop, Twilight of the Elves, um, which I have not get, gotten to yet, and literally was an arc from 2018. Look at that. I am so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> then we have the third book in the King Chronicles. We have the Lightning Thief. We have the Lightning Thief again. This one is actually the Barnes and Noble, ex maybe not Barnes and Noble. Actually, I don't remember what this is. Crap, I'm gonna have to get all of this out. Ugh. It's the 10th anniversary edition of the Lightning Thief, but it's also the Barnes and Noble exclusive collector's edition. So, all of those things wrapped up into one. This has really pretty end pages too. It's literally just all of the covers of Percy Jackson in the different languages that it's been published in and the different countries. I really love this. I think it's just, I don't know. It's one of those things that I just really love having. Then we have The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, The Shadow Crosser, The Titan's Curse, The Night Diary, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, The Storm Runner, and City of the Plague God. Again, 
a lot of Rick Riordan presents. So coming down to the shelf here, there is a stark difference between one side of the shelf and the other side of the shelf. I'm gonna finish up the middle grade and then we will talk about the romance contemporary section I have started here. So rounding out the middle grade, we have Wondersmith, which is the second book in the Nevermore series. We have The Adventurer's Guild, the first book, Arusha and the End of Time, Story Thieves, which I actually got a really long time ago and I've just never read. I just think it looks like a super cute little middle grade story, so I've always wanted to give it a try. And then The Strangers, which is another middle grade story that honestly I'm kind of freaked out a little bit by. It kind of looks like the, um, what's that one movie that came out? It was like the Jordan Peele movie. Was it Us? The one where there's like all those clones and something. This cover has always given me that sort of vibe. So it's always freaked me out a little bit, but I've always wanted to read it. And then we have York, The Last Olympian, and finally Arusha and the Tree of Wishes. And so this stark difference between black and white starts my romance contemporary section. So in this section, I have obviously, like I just said, romance and contemporary. I also have, if you can tell from this book right here, all my historical fiction because I have a whopping three historical fiction novels. And in addition, I also have any like adult literary slash contemporary fiction. So you will see some of that bouncing around. So first off we have Between Shades of Grey, which is a historical fiction. And then we have Love and Olives, which just sounds like a super cute romance. Uh, Chasing Lucky, I'll Give You the Sun, Heartstopper, which I finally got a copy of and I have been meaning to read for such a long time now and I just haven't yet, so I'm very excited that I finally have this. Then we have A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow, which I also have been really excited to read because it sounds absolutely adorable. Uh, Rent a Boyfriend, All I Want for Christmas, mm, I was about to say Nick Stone, Dear Martin. And then we have Felix Ever After, which is one of the cutest contemporary stories I have read in a very long time. I highly recommend people read this book. It's so good. We have When Dimple Met Rishi, The Sun is Also a Star, Little Fires Everywhere, Carry On, and Permanent Record. And now time for a little bit of yellow, some green, and mostly blue and purple. So here we have My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Backman, which I really want to get to this year. The Unexpected Everything, Fangirl, Clap When You Land, The Voting Booth, Since You've Been Gone, Heretics Anonymous, We Were Liars, A Very Large Expanse of Sea, which I literally have never read. I'm so mad at myself. I need to read this this year. Again, an arc from 2018. Don't come after me. I'm really bad at keeping on top of of these things. And things I hate about Pinky, The Wife Upstairs, Such a Fun Age, which are both, I believe, adult. This one might be like thriller-esque. It's a retelling of Jane Eyre, and this one is definitely like literary fiction uh, contemporary. Then we have Salt of the Sea and The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, Of Curses and Kisses, History is All You Left Me, The Rest of the Story, Breathless, and From Twinkle with Love. And to round out the blues, we have They Both Die at the End and New Year's Kiss. And to start the purples, we have The Astonishing Color of After, Pride, and Gorilla. And so finally we get to the last shelf of these bookshelves. On this side of the shelf we have a few contemporaries and then we go into all of my sci-fi which I actually don't have a lot of and I'm very surprised by. And then we go into some of my uh, classics as well as the Chronicles of Narnia, which does not apply to any of these things, but it's fine. So to round out my contemporaries, we have The Poet X, The Black Kids, This Is My America, and Chlorine Sky. And then we have the start of my sci-fi books. So clearly I did not separate by color down here because I just didn't have enough sci-fi books and variety of colors to be able to do that. But to start off my shelves, we have Warcross and Wildcard, both by Marie Lu, The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, uh, Skyward and Starsight by Brandon Sanderson, Red Rising and Golden Sun by Pierce Brown, Aurora Rising, Heart of Iron. And then this guy up here is actually a um, sort of short story little novella called Memento, which is, I believe, a prequel um, when it comes to Aiden. I mean, to me, that kind of looks like Aiden to me, so we're just gonna say that's what it is. Fun fact, I've actually never read this. I got this because I pre-ordered Obsidio and then sent in my receipt to the campaign and they like sent this out to people. So yeah, I, uh, I've never read it though. And then to finish off these bookshelves, I do just have a couple of classics. First off is Fahrenheit 451, which Actually, I don't really know why I have this book. I think that I found it in our hallway closet because one of my siblings had to read it for a class and I just put it on my shelf. And then we have Hamlet, which is my favorite Shakespeare novel, if you weren't aware. Um, I love Hamlet. I had to read it in high school in 12th grade 
and we watched the movie alongside it and we talked about it and we spent a really long time on it and this particular copy I found in a used bookstore in St. Augustine so I've just held on to it for a while. I'm sure there are prettier copies of Hamlet out there but I just really liked this one because of where I found it. The struggle of trying to put a book back on the shelf with one hand. Then we have A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens which I also had to read in high school and loved. We have 1984 by George Orwell again high school and loved and then we have my three Jane Austen novels that I own Emma, Pride and Prejudice, and Sense and Sensibility. Um, if you've been around you will know that I read both of these ones for the first time last year and absolutely loved them. I think you're getting a trend here of I don't think that I'm going to like classics and then I end up quote absolutely loving them again so um, I should really try to pick up more of them. And then finally we have the complete Chronicles of Narnia which I actually tried reading for the first time this past Christmas and could not get past The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe so therefore it's still on my shelf. But as you can see I did attempt to read at least that little bit of it on that side. <laughs> and so those are my shelves on this side of my room. Now let's go to the shelf on my other side of my room. So you're gonna have to ignore my messy bed here, but this little like standing shelf here, I recently got this past year. Uh, my dad helped me make it and essentially it's just a big book tower that I can put any extra books that I have on. Clearly because some of the shelves do not have books, I can fit more, but yeah, this is uh, my second little holding area for the rest of my books and let me share with you what's on it. Also for reference this thing is like literally seven feet tall. <laughs> I'm like 5'5 five five and it goes like all the way up there. So this whole shelving unit holds my murder mystery slash thriller stories. Those books down there at that shelf don't count but all of these ones here do. So starting up here uh, in color-coded order of course we have Sadie, One of Us is Lying, and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder which are my whitish books and then we have One of Us is Next and Burn Our Bodies Down which are my red and orange books and we go right down to this shelf which is this really really cute and adorable Renegades lunchbox. Oh my god. Fun fact I did a campaign with the publisher of Renegades to promote Supernova and I basically just had to like reread Arch Enemies and make like a synopsis of it on YouTube um, and they sent me this really really cool package with a bunch of cool stuff and this was one of the things and I was so excited to get this because I am such a big fan of the series. This is this really cute little lunchbox so like you know how in uh not movies but like I don't know, like superhero lunch boxes. Like they've always been a thing, right? And so to see this and get this was just like so fun to me. Like I love this. I love it so much. So clearly it's just the Renegades cast here. Renegades. And um, I'm just obsessed with it. I love it. I will forever like keep this. That's just like a little... I don't know, decoration. It's so cute. Then before I get to this shelf here, I just want to move over here because you're going to see these things in the shot when I do this. Um, these were made for me by my best friend Casey. She got into embroidery recently and I asked her to make me this one because I thought it was really cute and she ended up giving me this one too, which I thought was just adorable. So they're going to be here in the background. So on this shelf, we have my greens and my blue color books, uh, Wilder Girls, The Hand on the Wall, I Killed Zoe Spanos, The Silence of Bones, and Truly Devious. And so then we get down to the shelf with my like gray and black books. Um, most of these are tiny because a lot of them are clearly the get underlined paperbacks that I have. But first off we have An Arc of the Cousins by Karen M. McManus which I never read and I've been meaning to get to. Um, and then we have like I said all of the get underlined paperbacks. So we have Girl on the Run, The Game, Escape Room, and Fright Night. And then we have Lies Like Poison which I haven't read but also sounds really good. Then as we come down we have this which also was given to me by my best friend Casey. She actually made this, but I think so. Okay, first off, if you can't tell what it is, it says a dash of ash. So basically, the pages are folded in a way that it says like a dash of ash. I can see it from the angle that I have it at, but uh, I know that I'm looking for it, so hopefully you can see it too. So my friend Casey went on some website, I don't maybe it was Etsy or something, and she asked someone to give her a template sort of thing of how to fold the pages in order to make this say a dash of ash. I don't know what this sort of art form is called, but it's beautiful and I love it and I've cherished this forever. Also, fun fact, um, she went to the thrift store and got this book. It's a copy of Les Mis. And I love Les Mis, so like what? So funny. But yeah, it's just one of the coolest things that I have and I will cherish it because I love it so much. And then we're down to the 
well, second to last shelf. The last shelf doesn't really have anything, but the second to last shelf um, has a couple of books that I just didn't want to fit anywhere else, so I put them on this shelf. Now, these books used to be on the top of my bookshelf, so you wouldn't really see them all that often, but now that I have other books on the top of my bookshelf, I needed somewhere else to put these. So, first up, we have these two copies, um, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Peter Pan, but I got them at the New York Public Library the first time that I went to New York. I thought that these were just like really pretty covers, so I just decided to grab them. And then these books, if you have not heard the story from these books, these are my very first copies of the Percy Jackson series. So they are disgusting. Um, they're dusty because they've been on top of my bookshelf forever. Um, they are like worn down. Clearly the covers have seen better days. So you might be asking where the lightning thief is because that's clearly the first book in the series. Um, so my answer for you is a bit of a story. So in order to answer the question as to where my copy of The Lightning Thief went, my original copy of it, I need to bring you back over to my bookshelves so that you can look at this. So my bookshelves are cornered, right? There's a space in this back corner where the bookshelves don't meet the wall where um, The Lightning Thief sits. I wonder if I can show you it before my camera dies. If you look, Oh my god, you can see it! That's the lightning thief! It's really dusty and gross back there. Oh my god, you can see that it says the lightning thief. <laughs> I've never done this before, that's so funny. But yeah, we love that for me. And you guys, I think that's pretty much it for my books and my bookshelves. I love the way that I organized them. And I hope you guys... I don't know, I think they're pretty too, <laughs> and um, and enjoyed watching this. And so you guys, that was my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed me going through all of these books and explaining the hows and the whys and the whos to you. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of watching bookshelf tours, but I know that a lot of you love it, so I tried to make this video as like calming <laughs> as I could, but also I'm not that sort of person in my videos, so I hope I did it justice at least. I wanna ask you guys, how do you organize your books on your shelves? Do you have an organization method or do you just kinda like throw them in whenever you get a new book and you're just like, yep, that's where it goes and then it ends up looking good? I'm just curious because I've always wanted to be that person to just like throw books wherever I wanted, but uh, then it never ends up looking good. And I'm just like, why did I spend the time to do that? So I'm curious. Let me know in the comments how you guys like to do your bookshelves. But I think that's going to be it for this video. I don't think that there's anything more that I wanted to say on the topic of bookshelf tours. So if you want to follow me on any of my socials, all my handles are in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you later. Bye!